Zach can't stop writing lyrics. There are so many songs he wants to leave behind. With only months to live, his song called Clouds was born. I fell down, down, down to this dark and lonely hole. There was no one there to care about me anymore. I think every teenager out there feels invincible and they'll never admit it and it's not the kind of invincible like Superman it's the kind of invincible like I'll see you in five months I thought I was invincible I was ready for college pretty much and I was planning out way ahead and yeah turns out sometimes you can't do that my name is Zach Sobiak I'm 17 years old and I have osteosarcoma I've been told I have a few months to live, but I still have a lot of work to do. I want everyone to know, you don't have to find out you're dying to start living. You know, most people live kind of in the middle, in between like, oh, dream come true and you're dying. And it's, it's a very comfortable place to live. I'm living on the two extreme ends, so you have really, really good days and you have really, really bad days. Zach has always been incredibly empathetic and compassionate. This basketball game, I was kind of laughing about how one of the players had kind of a funny run. And he goes, yeah, but he's really good at, and then he listed all these things, and I thought, oh. He's just always looking for the good in people. And I think he's taught all of us that's how it's done. I would say that Zach is a testament to the fact that things are okay when you believe in something greater than yourself in the world. You can be with Zach and just by sitting there with him, feel better. He's got. I don't know how to describe it, he's got this aura about him. What makes you happy is seeing someone else smile because you put it there. That's what's awesome about like living in this world, so that you can help people. I, I like the structure of our family with two guys, two girls for the kids and mom and dad, because it kind of evens everything out. Grace has always been his baby. Zach is like the other half of me. All we need is to be there, like in the same room with each other. And that's enough for us. Thinking about my life without Zach, it's really hard to think about that. Like, I really get like sick to my stomach when I think about it. Zach had been going through the eighth grade and he and his sister decided to go for a run. And he came back from the run and he told me, Mom, my, my left hip hurts. So we went in for an MRI, and, and at this point still I'm thinking cancer was still not on my radar at all. They went in and found out that it was cancer. It was osteosarcoma. And it was so unbelievable, honestly. I was um, upstairs in the kitchen. And I just went upstairs and I cried. And I just said, I gotta live life <clears throat> like, well, Zach's gonna die tomorrow. My mom walked in on me once when I was laying on the ground because I didn't want to associate my bed with being sick. Five days after he finished chemotherapy, he had his routine CT scan of his chest and they found tumors in both lungs. She told us six months to a year. I just didn't understand that. Like, it didn't make any sense to me. We did have an option of surgery, but that would mean they'd have to take his left leg and half of his pelvis and he wouldn't even be able to sit up. That's when we got to the point where 
we have to make decisions about quality of life. With the hospital, it's the most sterile place in the world. But you just do not feel clean there at all. And it was tough being there because you just, you felt totally disconnected. He decided, I don't want to be in the hospital all the time. I want to be out with friends. I don't want to feel sick. And I want to be home. In a house like this, where we have six people and four kids, part of the time I enjoy the heck is just when we're alone, just sitting there. We could be watching a movie, we could be talking cars or whatever. Zach likes to dream big, so he kind of got into cars and, you know, car magazines and stuff, and that was, that was one thing that he would do in the hospital. I would sort through the cars and be like, okay, which one is the least expensive but has the highest performance? Nissan GTR is like, oh, it's perfect. I've dreamt of that car for years. So, we have a little tiny surprise for you. I don't like surprises. Oh, I think you're gonna like this one. <gasps> Holy crap! Are you serious? You get to drive it for a week. <laughs> You're driving me places. Oh my god. Oh, hey, Zach. Hey, what's up? You like that? Yeah. It was pretty impressive, huh? Oh. The look on his face is so cool. And when Zach lights up, it makes everyone happy. It's like being dunked in cold water and not being able to breathe, but in a really good way. <laughs> It wasn't the car, it was the experience the car created and the joy that Zach receives from driving it and the joy I received from being with Zach when he got to drive it. Being able to experience these things, it helps a lot because you can either sit in your basement and wait or you can get out there and do some crazy stuff. When we found the cancer in his pelvis. I said, you know, maybe you should start writing some letters. Music is a way I can express myself without having to, you know, burden everyone else. I was cleaning up downstairs and there was a lot of paper laying around with different scribblings on it and I picked one up and I read it and it was clouds. Sammy and Zach have been dear friends for many, many years. They're songwriters together. That's how they communicate with each other. Our musical thing has like, it's like really become something and it's become a part of us. There's gonna be nobody like him to do it with again. And like, that's gonna be really hard. I, I find that with my situation, it's almost harder to be on the other end. I have closure, and she won't have closure. There are very, very, very few people who I love as much as I love Zach. My closure is being able to get my feelings into these songs so they could have something to remember me by or, you know, lean on when I was gone. For me, it's, it's Zach's way of saying I'm okay. Good. Saying goodbye. And I'm just so grateful that it's there because I'm gonna need it later. His music is kind of like a record of his, um, like how, how much he cares for us. This is a song that he wrote me, For My Grace. So I'll keep that always with me, constantly. Yeah, I'll stop there. Okay. I love you. Oh, I love you too, Grace. See, that's like the first time ever. Is it really? Pretty much. Yeah, she's pretty cool. I think, um, with my diagnosis, we've become a better and stronger family. 
we all love each other just that much more. Because when you go through stuff like that, you go through it together. You have to st stick together as a family. I mean, that's imperative. Because, you know, we've always been there ever since Zach was first diagnosed. You know, we've been there as a family, we're all together, and we have to make it through as a family together. How I remember my brother. Happy, always smiling, always limping around with his funny little walk. That's as simple as it is, happy, I guess. My friends, I don't know if they've accepted, you know, me being terminal or not. They know that if they just treat me the same, everything will be fine, honestly. He's someone that you can trust is going to be smiling the next day, despite his condition. He's kind of just like a, a light in the school. If I have a bad day, it's not actually really a, right, a bad really day. And if I'm day. complaining about something, it just, it's all about perspective, I think. He will always live on in my life. The values he has taught me, the memories we've had, they're so ingrained in who I am as a person. Amy, she's a smart girl. We knew he was terminal when they started dating, and she knew that. She sat down with her mom and talked through it, and what they decided was, would you date him if he didn't have cancer? And she said, yeah. She's really helped him through some hard times. One of our first dates was, we planned a picnic, you know, just in a park somewhere. I knew he had um, he was going in for scans that day. We get the results back and my doctor walks in and she's pretty quiet and she looks pretty serious and it's like, well, we can't be that bad, I mean, come on. And she goes, so you've got a collapsed lung. I'm like, oh, okay. I broke down crying because it was like the first time it was real that he had cancer because before it was, everything seemed normal. It's like, well, can I at least go to the picnic and then come back and have surgery? And they're like, no, we need to do this now. <laughs> he was so devastated because all I cared about was getting to that date. Yeah, I was I was pretty angry that I had to miss the picnic because who doesn't like a good picnic? You know, it's awesome. Stupid lung. Everyone was on the side. Good morning. 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 Oh, we're not going to school it today. It takes more to do. It takes a man. Where are we going? <laughs> I'll tell you. I don't know where to go. We're just moving. Where do we go? We're lost. They're driving. I I'll tell you. Get to the cops and all the things we said. We were self-assured. Because it's a long road to wisdom, but it's a short one to be right. ignored. In my eyes, be in my heart, be in my eyes, I, 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 be in my heart. So now I think that I I almost burst into tears just because it was so perfect. Picnic basket full of cold pizza, which pretty much defines our relationship right there. We know what we both would want in our future. We know that we love each other just the same amount. Well, <laughs> we talked about getting married and having kids and our jobs and we do that a lot when we have bad days. <laughs> so like when we start to cry, that's when we'll sit down and just plan it all out. We have four, three or four kids. We haven't decided yet. But I kind of want four because you can have two boys and two girls then, because that's what we had in our family. It worked out pretty well. So it's one of those things that, you know, it's it's like your ultimate dream kind of thing. So most people just ignore it, or most people think, oh, it'll never happen. And you know, mine obviously probably won't. Um. I think the moment I'm most scared about is leaving the hospital after he's gone and knowing that he's not coming with 
and having to walk out of it. I will actually love her to death. To my death. But yeah, it's... That's, that's the thing, it's like, why not get married? Because, you know, till death do us part, and I'm dying, so we better get on this. That kind of thing. But yeah, I do love her to death. And I will. Forever. Okay, Sobiac family, everyone come downstairs. <laughs> so I'm Justin, and uh, I'm a director, and we're here making a little documentary about uh, your amazing family member. And I came here, and I was expecting to meet a great kid who, you know, had a cool YouTube video and was inspiring, but I was not expecting to meet a 17-year-old that would change my life. So when I first contacted your mom, I told her I wanted to make a music video for you, which we just unfortunately couldn't do. But what I was able to do was reach out to a few people and I just told them your story. And I told them I just wanted to do something for you because you've done so much for us. What resulted was something very special. I just want you to know, this stuff's not happening because you're dying. It's really because of the way you're living. I just want you to know that. Zach, such a beautiful song. This is for you. I fell down, down, down to this dark and lonely hole. You can just tell that they all love Zach's story and admire him so much, and it was amazing to see. He was in awe. Like, you couldn't believe it. Neither, none of us could. <laughs> Sitting there, holding a rope, and we'll go up, 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 but I'll fly a little higher. It won't be long now. It won't be long now. The most bizarre thing I think I've ever seen. Craziest feeling in the world. Seeing everybody who loves him at the end, it made me cry. It really makes you want to keep on going. Oh, Grace. Grace, you've been my best friend for 14 years. And uh, we've done so much together. Eh? It's gonna be tough going, but you gotta keep, keep being strong. You gotta kick some butt on the basketball court too. And uh, you take him to the championship. Sam. Oh, you've been the best big brother anyone could ever ask for. You've given me so much knowledge. And you've helped me through so much. And I think it's, it's important that you know that I love you because being guys, I don't think we say it too much, but I do love you so much. Oh, yeah. Squeeze from the back of the toothpaste bottle. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you so much. Because you've always kept me strong in my faith and, and everything. Mom and Dad. Best friends anyone could ever ask for. I could only wish that I could have kids and raise them. Like you raised me because you did one hell of a job. <laughs> no. You're the best parents anyone could ever ask for. And I love both of you so much. And thank you for being my parents. Life is really just beautiful moments, one right after the other. All of these experiences are super, super cool. All of them are giving me just a little bit more closure on everything and kind of accepting everything a little bit more.
show me that it's not all about the grades you get or how cool you are in high school. It's about doing what makes you happy and no matter when you're gonna go, to live life to the fullest every day. It's really simple actually, and it's just try and make people happy. Maybe you have to learn it with time, maybe you have to learn it the hard way, but as long as you learn it, you're gonna make the world a better place. I think that's actually one of the blessings of cancer is that you kind of come out of denial. And so in doing that, things are better. You know, that, that life is richer. Everything means more. Beauty is more beautiful. He's a beautiful person. And I'm so happy to have been Zach Sobiak's mom. Death is just another th thing on the agenda, kind of. Yeah, it's scary, but the only reason it's scary is because you don't know what's next, or if there is a next. So it's kind of like sitting in the dark. And so you can either choose to be freaking out in the dark and thinking, okay, what's out there? Or you can just relax and fall asleep and just be happy and content with everything. I want to be remembered as a kid who went down fighting and didn't really lose. <laughs>